Good afternoon. Welcome to Our Lady of Joy. We are grateful you are with us this afternoon. I have just a couple of very quick announcements. First of all, today is the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. If you're following our readings in the Red Missal, they can be found beginning on page 524. We continue to be in need of ushers at all masses, especially our 4 p.m. mass. Uh, any parishioner, male or female, is uh, welcome to help out. Uh, please speak with an usher if you'd like to participate. I'd like to introduce Anna Dice. Uh, Anna is our coordinator of children's catechesis, and she has a few words about our family ministry. Again, my name is Anna Dice, coordinator for Children's Catechesis and Family Ministry, and we have big plans for this year. I'm very, very excited to announce all of what will be going on. We will have family ministry returning in person again this year. We'll be meeting twice a month. Holy Family Catechesis as well will be meeting in person at the same time as family ministry. Our goal and our vision here is really to serve every single age group from ages zero all the way up to 99 on our Wednesday evenings for family ministry. For the youngest children, we'll have child care. For our ages three to six, we'll have catechesis of the Good Shepherd going in the atriums, which I think you, for those of you who remember from the spring, have supported very well, and I'm very grateful for that. In the fall, I'll give some tours of the atrium whenever it's completely finished. Um, we'll also have our sacrament preparation classes for those who are preparing to receive their sacraments and a brand new faith club called Spark for our fourth and fifth graders. So we'll have Edge for the middle school and then teens are welcome to come and volunteer and parents will have an opportunity for either adoration and confession. We'll have a dinner that we provide each time that we gather. So twice a month, you'll have a free meal. Um, and then also an opportunity for some catechesis and ways of being able to present that to your children in your families. So there's a lot of big plans going on for this fall. In order to do all of this, I do need some volunteer help. So some of the opportunities include hospitality, just welcoming people, handing out some song sheets, if there's any um, notes for that evening, being able to pass those out, very simple. So hospitality, childcare, just playing with the children, making sure that they are safe. Um, I do need catechists as well. I was hired on during COVID, so unfortunately I've not been able to meet as many people as I would like. Um, and even some of the catechists who have served previously, I just may not know who you are. So please, come up to me, talk to me, um, I'd be happy to get to know you. Also, if you don't want to teach, if you're not sure about teaching, you can always help in the classroom, as a classroom aid. So there are many opportunities. Um, I'm also looking for a little help in the formation office. Right now I had this huge idea. It's going to be amazing. Everyone loves it that I've told so far. But this Bible project that I'm doing is going to take several hours of work. So if you want to come and help laminate some papers in the office, I would be very grateful for that. Or to sharpen some pencils or something of that nature. Office volunteers. Also, small group leaders for adults. As I mentioned, we're going to have a time of catechesis for adults as well. And so I need some small group leaders. You don't have to know the answers. You don't have to know the answers to all the questions. What we're really looking for is a way to be able to facilitate conversation and community. And that's what we're looking for. We're trying to develop a community of families. So if you are one who doesn't necessarily like to talk, but loves, loves to listen to others, loves to ask questions, engage with others in that way, 
facilitate conversations among other people, that is something else that we need as well. So if you don't feel comfortable with the little kids, there's opportunities for you to serve um, for the adults as well. So again, it's a wide range. What is your comfort level? Do you love the Lord? You know, if you love the Lord and you feel a little tug, let's have a conversation and see what's the best fit for you, whether it's one of these ministries or something else. So thank you so much for your time. I'll be at after mass um, in the back. Thank you. We can now stand and greet each other and we will begin our celebration. Our entrance song is number 568 in your green journey books, O oh, Bless the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him, and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again, but the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up and ate and drank, then strengthened by that food, He walked 40 days and 40 nights into the mountain of God, Oreb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Two elderly gentlemen from a retirement center were sitting on a bench when one turns to the other and says, Jim, I am 83 years old now, and I'm just full of aches and pains. I know you're about my age. How do you feel? Jim says, I feel just like a newborn baby. Really? 
Like a newborn baby, asked his surprised friend. Yeah, no hair, no teeth, and I think I just wet my pants. <laughs> Prior to my going into the seminary to train for the priesthood, I was very active in Catholic charismatic renewal. Very often, we were asked to fast as a preparation for certain programs or mission. That used to be a big challenge for me because I like food a lot. Like some of you, I eat food not simply for the nourishment it provides, but the satisfaction that comes from eating great food, like Italian food, right? <laughs> the fact is, we all need food to survive. We know that from personal experience and from the stories of people who starve themselves to death. To stay alive, we need to eat. In today's first reading, we heard how an angel provided bread for Elijah in the desert as he would have starved to death. The Bible says, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. Wow. Strong spiritual food that gave incredible strength. The prophet Elijah is a symbol of fallen man who is a sojourner in a fallen world. Like Elijah, God knows that our journey to his kingdom would be too much for us. That is, we will not survive spiritually through the hardships, trial, and temptations of daily life unless we strengthen ourselves regularly with the bread from heaven. For the last three Sundays, Jesus has been teaching about the bread of life. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks specifically about the nature of the bread he wishes to give to the crowd. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The first point to note here is Jesus is telling us that he is not just giving us material food like the manna in the desert and the bread that he multiplied. Rather, he says that he is the bread himself. Consequently, the bread will contain his real presence, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. The second point is the bread will have the capacity to sustain us spiritually. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1392 states, what material food produces in our bodily life, Holy Communion wonderfully achieves in our spiritual life. Communion with the flesh of the risen Christ, of flesh given life, and given life through the Holy Spirit, preserves, increases, and renews the life of grace received at baptism. This growth in Christian life needs the nourishment of Eucharistic communion, the bread for our pilgrimage until the moment of death when it will be given to us as viaticum. The third and last point is the bread will be the source of our immortality. Again, this bread is different from the manna in the desert because the manna did not confer eternal life. The only food that conferred eternal life was the fruit of the tree of life in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. But Jesus' flesh is the equivalent of that fruit. One may eat it and not die. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. John's Gospel, chapter 6, at verse 51. St. Ignatius of Antioch affirms this truth when he refers to the Eucharist as the medicine of immortality. This truth is also expressed at Mass in some of the prayers 
that the priest says silently. The first is the moment of commingling. Commingling is that moment at Mass when the priest breaks a small piece of the consecrated host and places it in the chalice. While placing the consecrated host in the chalice, the priest says silently, May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. The second instance is that moment just before the priest consumes the body and blood of our Lord. He begins with the body. He takes the consecrated body of Christ and says silently, May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. He does the same with the blood. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. And he consumes the precious blood. The third instance is during the ablution, the cleansing of the chalice, the ciborium, and the pattern after the distribution of communion. Before consuming what is left from the sacred particles or the sacred species, again, the priest says silently, what has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart. And what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. These prayers testify to the fact that the Eucharist is not simply a communion meal, as some people insist. It is the medicine and food of immortality. In the Eucharist is contained the life of God himself, life which sustains us not only now in this age, but also in the age to come. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the kind of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us turn to God who gives us bread from heaven and knows all our needs. In faith, we present to him our prayers. That the church may be a constant and steadfast sign of God's kingdom in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders may lead us to a closer union with Jesus by their word and example. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer that governments will exercise their authority and power for the common good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, who multiplied the loaves, may fill us with active compassion for those whose rights to food, work, and life itself are threatened. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from loneliness or alienation, may take comfort in Jesus, who lovingly draws near to all who seek him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the personal intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and especially for our community intercessory prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially Ted Gushy, the primary intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Mother Mary to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 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 and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father of all that is good, we give you thanks. Hear and answer, this, answer the prayers we have offered in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song is I Am the Living Bread in your green journey books, number 794. Pray, beloved brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. But please, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. To him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which are elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world, but please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope and Thomas, our Bishop Eduardo, his auxiliary, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed to those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Our communion song is in your booklets on page 76, To Be Like You.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to God. The theme song is Everlasting uh, in your 23.